Hi there, welcome back. Before going any further, I just want to show you something. This thing has been sitting here for two days since the last time I tested it. And if you recall, if you saw the previous video, I tested that channel and I disconnected the supplies to this channel. But this, these two cables, this is the plus 70 minus 70 that supplies the uh, output board, which in turn supplies the input board. This actually is, was charged up because this bank of capacitors comes from the power transformer, which uh, switched on at the same time as I switched on that one. So the only part of this channel that worked when I tested that one was actually the supply. And this thing was insulated just to keep it out of the way. And if I recall correctly, because I was using the thing on the with the limiter, I was uh, powering it up with the limiter. We didn't get the full 70 volt supply anyway. I think it was about 57, 60 volts. But this has been sitting for a couple of days. And I want to show you what's on these capacitors at the moment. 55 volts. Just breaking through the tape. Minus 62 volts. So this is something you've got to be very careful with because even though it's been switched off and it's been a couple of days, these capacitors hold their charge for an incredibly long time. And if you're not careful, you think that's off, you switch it on, you plug it in, you end up with a massive spark and in all likelihood, because you're putting on only one side at a time, either the positive or the negative, you're going to blow something up. So that's just to... Uh, give an idea of how dangerous it is to assume that these capacitors have discharged over time. Right, what I want to get on with is I want to get on with adjusting the pots, those little pots that have three functions. This one here is uh, output offset. So you connect a voltmeter to the uh, speaker terminals and adjust for zero volts plus minus two millivolts offset. You then put your meter between your ground and pin 2, I think it is, and you adjust the 1 to get 0 volts, and then you put it between uh, 2 and 3, and you adjust that one to get 0 volts. So those three are the first adjustments I'm going to make. This will be without an input and without speakers connected. And then we're going to have to adjust the idle current through the output transistors with that pot and what they tell you is there's a, a pair of test uh, connectors at the back there and you're supposed to let it warm up for a while and then adjust it for about 15 millivolts across those two connectors. So let's get on with it. I've now switched it on. I've tried it first with a dim bulb limiter and uh, then I made sure that that was okay and it was and then I switched the delimiter to go through directly to mains so I have the bypass function on the limiter that bypasses the isolation transformer I then switch that onto mains bypassing the isolation transformer with the ground connection just to make sure that uh, everything is working okay that modification I made on the dim bulb limiter as well just to be able to do a a real live through the mains test. I'll link above where I made the modifications and I'll explain in the I explain in that video why I did that. But I've now got this thing bypassed directly to the mains so this thing is functioning as it should and what we've got this, mul this uh, multimeter is connected to the speaker outputs. We've got 2.7 millivolts on the output which is very low. Let's see if we can improve that a bit wrong way. This is a 10 turn pot. Very fine adjustment. It's actually quite easy to do. There we go. You can actually get that perfectly set to zero. Brilliant. Now the next one involves the uh, input socket, the uh, XLR socket. Adjust the first one. This is RT404, that one there. When you put it between pin 2 and 3 for 0 millivolts plus minus 2 millivolts. So let's get going. 
Wrong way. Always the bloody wrong way. Okay, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millivolts, that's pretty good. Let it settle for a while. That's zero. It might settle, so we'll come back and recheck that once it's done. And the next stage is between pin one and three, and we adjust that guy there. So one and three, That's pretty high. Okay, pretty close. Again, question of letting it settle and then rechecking everything again. Right, now the uh, idle current. Now it's been on for a little bit, quite a while, more than 15 minutes, and we're getting 6.3, 6.4 millivolts. What we're supposed to get is 15 millivolts. So we need to adjust that guy there. Too much. It's a very sensitive spot over there. Yeah, that's about it. I'll reduce it a little bit later. So yeah, now we've got all the settings done and it seems this channel is ready. Great stuff. So not really much to show you on this video, just to wrap things up. It um, this turned out to be quite a challenge. It's a very, very good sounding amplifier. I think uh, this thing was definitely well worthwhile. <laughs> the hassles I had getting this thing to, to the state it's in now. I'm going to be leaving it for quite some time under test, probably a week or so, just to make sure that I don't have any surprises. A friend of mine who owns this actually lives in Lisbon, so this thing is getting shipped to the mainland. So it's not something you can just pop in and do a repair if you find something goes wrong. So it is worthwhile doing a proper check. And um, I've actually cleaned up most of the, well, I've cleaned up the entire inside, a lot of dust on there. And so all I need to do now is put the cover on, ready to test and just leave it testing, play music. That's what it's supposed to do. And of course, this thing is going to become regular use. Uh, this is going to go in for regular use because... I really did need a uh, balanced line driver to test uh, amplifiers like this one. And um, sometimes it's just handy to have one of, thing, one of these things lying around. I could build a power supply. I've actually started building a power supply, but I don't know. The, the, the amount of current this thing draws, it's about 10 milliamps. And um, the fact that I've got an on-off switch, I can just switch it off when I'm not using it. I think I might just leave it with a battery. It's not that bad. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, let's say goodbye to the Griffin. Bye for now.